everyone, my name is Sofia Varela, I work in Water Services and Technologies and today I will be presenting the webinar about environmental and hydrogeological data management applied to the mining industry. Thank you all for joining us today. The goal of the webinar today is to present you the fundamentals of data management applied to environmental and hydrogeological data and show you why it is essential nowadays to the mining industry. After that, I'll show you a software called Hydrogeo Analyst to illustrate all those concepts. To introduce a little bit about water services and technologies, we are a team of professionals with more than 30 years of experience in hydrogeological and data management solutions for mining companies. Our core business is technical services such as groundwater modeling and hydrogeological studies and environmental data management. We also do geotechnical and geological models and analysis. We also sell products such as softwares and sensors and we also focus on training such as national and international courses, in-company courses and online courses. We also do free webinars, such as the one I'm presenting you today. To introduce our webinar, I would like to start discussing why is data management essential for the mining industry nowadays. First of all, because the mining industry work with a large amount of data in different, different formats. For example, we have different areas, such as hydrogeological team, the geotechnical team, the environmental team, and they work with large amount of data and each of them use different Excel files in different formats, they have different PDF files, Word images with different information that we all need to manage and analyze together. In the mining industry we also have constant changes such as new information we need to manage and analyze and we are also always planning and working with the system expansion. And why does it relate to data management? Because we need a flexible data management solution where we can easily insert new tables to store new information or we can easily adapt the structure of the database accordingly as the project grows, for example, to implement it in a new mine site. An example of that is that a couple of weeks ago we finished a water balance tool for a client at a big mine site and at the end of the project he asked us if we could create an indicator of ore production per cubic meters of water offtake. At that time we didn't store the information for our production in the database, so the client sent us all the Excel files with the data we needed. Thanks to a flexible database, it was pretty easy to create a new table, store all this data, and create the indicator that the client asked us to. Another consideration regarding data management is about data structure, organization, and analysis. A basics of data management is to set standards to the data to be able to analyze it and, for example, compare between the mine sites if needed. That's important for the mining industry because we have different kinds of information from different areas, such as hydrogeological, geotechnical and environmental, for example. And it's really important to set standards for us to be able to compare it and to analyze it in an integrated way for example, using visualization and interpretation tools. Finally, in the mining industry, we are constantly creating different reports for our managers, the environmental agencies, the technical teams, and so on. And we all know that that consumes a lot of time. With a data management solution, we can create automated reports that for each one of those stakeholders that will be automatically updated once we import new data into the database. That will help us to communicate much more efficiently and it will help us to save a lot of time. So, as an overview of what I just said, I present you here the fundamentals for environmental data management. We start with the database flexibility. As we have discussed before, this is an important point 
because it allows us to adapt the database structure as our project grows. We also strongly suggest the use of automated data entry that not only brings us much more efficiency to the process as it diminishes the possibility of human mistakes. An example of that is automatically importing data from a telemetry system into the database. We are actually implementing that in a couple of mine sites here in Brazil, such as at a mine site of Nexa Resources. That brings us to our next point, which is data integrity and quality assessment and quality control. It is important to notice that it's not all about automated data entry. We also need to guarantee that the data we are importing into our database follows the pre-established standards of our database and also are consistent in terms of we don't have negative values for a field that only allows you to have positive values. In that example of I just told you about of Nexa resources, we offer two options for the client. The first one was developing an interface for pre-validating the data before importing into the database and the second option was creating specific reports for data validation after importing it into the database. We strongly suggest and recommend the first option because it's safer in terms of that you don't import inconsistent data into your database. And after you have imported the validated data into your database from all the different areas, you can perform integrated analysis and use visualization and interpretation tools to correlate all this information. And another advantage of an environmental data management system uh, is that with all this integrated analysis of all this correlated information, you can perform automated reports which will be updated automatically as you import new data into your database. I will show you some example of visual visualization tools and report automatic reports later on on the presentation. Well, to illustrate all those fundamentals and everything we discussed so far, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a software called Hydrogeo Analyst. For those who haven't heard about it, uh, Hydrogeo Analyst was developed by Waterloo Hydrogeologic, a Canadian company, and it's been in the market for over 20 years now. Hydrogeo Analyst is widely used for mining companies. For example, here in Brazil, all the big companies uh, use Hydrogeo Analyst for their environmental, hydrogeological, and geotechnical data management. Uh, some of those companies, for example, are Vale, Nexa Resources, Samarco, CBMM, and others. Well, the advantages of Hydrogeo Analyst are linked to everything we have discussed. Some of it is the possibility of semi-automated import or even a fully automated import from telemetry data, for example, as I have talked to you about before. Uh, possibility of pre-validation tools, data integrity and quality assessment and quality control tools, tools for statistical analysis, different uh, visualization tools such as maps, profiles, cross-section, visualization in 2D and 3D, and the tool specific for automatic reporting. So all those tools I have mentioned to you about in Hydrogen Analyst, they are part of a cyclic workflow which means once you import new data into your database, all the data analysis 2D, 3D and reports tool will be automatically updated with your new information. So we can say that with Hydrogen Analyst, you have an integrated data management system, which will bring you much more efficiency in your analysis once your process is automated and much more reliability in your analysis with your validated data and quality information. Hydrogeo Analyst is based on a SQL database and its tools are divided into three main groups data management, analysis and interpretation, and collaboration. I will talk now a little bit more of those groups. Diving into the data management group, 
The first important tool is the template manager, where you can easily customize your data structure, which means you can add unlimited tables and fields to your database. An example of the applicability of this tool that I have mentioned you earlier is about the water balance, where the client asked us to store new information in the database and we could do it pretty easily with the template manager. We also have the user manager tool, which is used for controlling the user access. We have three main options, read only user, the standard user who can read and edit uh, data, and the administrator who can read, edit data, and also customize the data structure in the template manager. Another interesting tool is the data transfer system, where we can import and export data from Hydrogel Analyst. You can easily import and validate data from different formats, such as Excel files, Access, import book images, uh, LAS files from Geophysics, and etc. But a really interesting format is the EDD, Electronic Data Deliverable. It is a file in which you have pre-validated your data with the standards from your database. Let me show you how it works. First, you need another app called Quick Checker. It is a free app with a friendly user interface. Here you can see the app. In this app, you need to import the EDD template that you have created in Hydrogen Analyst with the standards from your database and also import your file with the data you want to validate. Here, for example, I have more than 10,000 results for water quality. This example is just to show you the power of this tool. In this example, we have here three main errors against my standards in my database. Two of them are misspelling in the parameters name, which I'm going to choose the correct name from my parameter list, which is standard from my database. This is the correct one, for example. This one, it's also a misspelling problem, and I'm choosing the correct name from my standard list in the database. And the last one is a more advanced criteria. Uh, for the results of my parameters, I have chosen an advanced criteria that allows only positive values and does not allow negative values. And this one, this negative value of pH probably is just a mistype, so I'm going to correct it. And now I have all data, all the 10,000 results validated against my standards in my database and I just click on validate and submit and I'll send it to my database afterwards. Here I just have to save the file in the correct format and it's really easy to import in Hydrogen Analyst and I have more reliability in this data. Another option for using the EDDs is the EDD Mobile which was developed for collecting data in the field. Uh, inside Hydrogen Analyst, with your EDD template, with your standards from your database, you will create a form that will be fulfilled in the field and automatically validate the data against your standards. Let's see how it works. When we are in Hydrogen Analyst, we create this form for the EDD mobile. And when the technician is still in the office and has access to the internet, he just needs to open this link we created in Hydrogen Analyst on his tablet or on his cell phone. And once he gets to the field, he doesn't need to have access to the internet anymore. The data he will fulfill in the form will be stored in his memory card on his cell phone and once he gets back to the office, it will be automatically sent to Hydrogen Analyst. Let's see how it works. In my form here, I have the stations I need to do my field work for. Here, I am collecting a water levels monitoring data. Here, I have to choose the dates for today and my water level. For example, I just fulfill the form. It is automatically validating against the criteria in my database. So if, for example, I inserted a negative value, it wouldn't accept because I set the criteria 
to allow only positive values. Once I have finished my work in the field, I just click on submit, send, and my stations have been su submitted successfully. And when I open Hydrogen Analyst for the next time, I'll have a warning saying that I have new information to import in my database. Those are pretty simple steps and that makes our field work much more efficient and gives more, more reliability to our data. Here we have another tool that's called list and material editors. That's exactly where we specify our standard inputs that I've been talking about all the webinar. With this tool, we can create lists of, lists of valid values for almost any field in my database. For example, chemical names, the, one, the ones I have showed you in my quick checker file, stations, station type, and etc. That way I'll have more consistent and reliable data. This example, I have my station types, I have my these four station types, which I have observation well, borehole, open hole, pumping well, surface water, test pit, weather station, effluent, and etc. As Hydrogeo Analyst is also a software for management of hydrogeological information as well, we have a specific tool to create, edit, and manage the material specifications and patterns to use in our, in our project project for well profiles, cross sections, and 3D scenes. Here we can fully customize the name of the materials and the images and etc. We also have a tool specifically for quality assessment and quality control of laboratory results to verify the accuracy of laboratory results. Here we can do analysis of blanks, duplicates, spiked samples, dilution factors, detection limits, and holding times. It is a pretty efficient tool that saves us a lot of time analyzing this data. Regarding the analysis and interpretation group, the first tool is the query editor, where we can build custom queries using the interface or direct with SQL. I like to say that this is the heart of Hydrogen Analyst because it is where we can ask questions to our database and retrieve information from it. For example, one question I could ask would be, in my last water quality campaign, uh, which results were above the legislation limits? Or another question would be, in my last month, what was the average efficiency of my pumping wells around my pit? Those are just two examples, but I could ask any question to my database and retrieve any information from it. And I will use those queries to visualize information in my maps and in my reports and etc. Talking a little bit of the visualization tools, first we have the well profile and cross section editor where firstly we can create customized borehole logs as we can see here in this slide we can present any information with depth as well we can customize all these images and etc and we also have a tool specific for cross sections interpretations where we can plot water levels we can plot also geophysical logs or any information with depth as well we can also plot here any certain interpolated surface as well, for example, the pit or the future pit, for example. And here in the cross sections, we have, we can have three different interpretations, the geological interpretation, the hydrogeological interpretation, and the specific interpretation for exporting the layers for our hydrogeological numerical model, for example, to export those information for visual mod flow flex. Another interesting tool is the map module, which is a built-in GIS model where we can create maps and perform any special spatial analysis. What is really interesting of this feature is that we can import queries here and once we update the information 
or import new information in our database, they will be automatically updated in the maps as well. For example, here we are presenting a table with the results that are above the legislation limits and once I import new results in the database, this map and these tables will be automatically updated. Here we can import shape files, AutoCAD files, uh, aerial images, and we can also dereference those images here within HGA. We can also do different uh, methods for interpolation, such as natural neighbor, Krieging, and inverse distance. And we also have a tool for 3D visualization and interpolation where we can interpolate 3D surfaces and display them in a 3D viewer. We can, for example, display a, a 3D plume and animated it with the time <laughs> and create a small short video, video with it. We can also present, for example, the water levels and we could also animate the, the water levels dropping with the pumping wells, for example, around the pit. And we also can link hydrogen analysts to external applications where we can leverage other software, such as AquaCam for geochemical modeling and water quality analysis, Aquifer Test for slug test and pumping test analysis and interpretation, and Power BI, where we can create fully customizable and dynamic dashboards to visualize information. Before we continue the presentation, I want to show you a little bit of those features in Hydrogel Analyst. This is the first view of Hydrogel Analyst, and here in our project tree, we have all the features we inserted in this project. For example, here we can create any station groups we want, and those station groups can be, for example, can be dynamic. For example, for monitoring wells, anytime I import a new monitoring well in my, da in my database, they will be automatically inserted in this station group here. I will select my station group of boreholes with plot data because I want to show you our well profile templates. It's important to notice that those templates are fully customizable, such as, for example, uh, the columns, the informations, the colors, the images, everything's fully customizable. Here we can plot, for example, any information with depth, for example, geophysical information. Here, this is an example of a cluster well with our water level monitoring data. We could, for example, create a template specifically for monitoring well, where we could present the historical monitoring uh, water level information. We could also present lithology and sample labels and etc. Just keep in mind that it, this is fully customizable. I would also like to show you our map projects, such as this one. Um, for example, here we have our water quality information. We imported a query that shows us where the specific parameter TVOC exceeds the legislation limits. And it automatically highlights for me the results that are above the legislation limits and the dates of the campaigns. Once I import new information in this database, it, these tables will be automatically updated and the highlight values will be updated as well. Here we can also import shapefiles, AutoCAD files, we can also import IRO images and georeference it in the map project too. Another interesting feature here is that we can create our cross sections in this visualization of the maps and we can interpolate them here uh, together with the maps as well. Uh, for example, here we have all, all the cross sections we interpolated. This one presents geophysical analysis as well. Here we are presenting the intersection with other 
cross-section as well. In this case, the lithology is already interpreted for us. As I have mentioned before, we can have a geology interpretation. We could also have a hydrogeological interpretation with the upper aquifer, aquitard, and lower aquifer. And we also have the model layers interpreted as well. And this information I can export and import in my numerical model, for example, with Visual Modflow Flex. Uh, another interesting feature I mentioned to you about is the 3D scenes. Here we can visualize, for example, a 3D plume concentration, and it is already animated with time. Here we can also present the cross sections we have interpreted, our borehole logs, and etc. Here we could also have presented, for example, the water levels, and we can animate it, the dewatering from the pit. This is another example. Talking a little bit now about our collaboration tools, the first one is the mobile EDD workflow where we use mobile devices to collect field data. This is the tool I have showed you earlier uh, where we have a form with our validation standards criteria on it and we go to the field, fulfill the form with the validation criteria and submit it to Hydrogen Analyst. Once again, I need internet connection only when I'm in the office to open the web page link. And then in the field, I don't need internet connection. And when I click submit, it will be automatically submitted when I have internet connection again. Another interesting feature is the event planner, where we can plan and manage, and manage sampling events and tasks. This is a really interesting tool where we can organize our field events or our sampling events. Here we will plan the schedules, the stations to be sampled. We can create a checklist of equipment we want to take into the field or things that need to be checked and etc. And we can send it together with the EDD or the EDD mobile for the team in the field. And once they are in the field, they need to fulfill this form and if they cannot perform a monitoring in a specific a station they need to justify why they couldn't monitor it and once they come back to the office they need to complete this task and send all the information. This is a really interesting tool where we can organize and have all the information for our sampling events and tasks centralized within Hydrogeo Analyst. The last three features I want to show you are specifically for reporting. The first one is the online sharing, where we can publish data to the web. We can publish data in those three formats, such as tables with the query information. Uh, we can plot charts as well, and a time series charts, and also information on the map. Uh, it is important to notice with this tool that this information is static. Once I publish information into the web, if I import new data into my database, I need to publish this data again. And this is important because we don't need that this data is out. We don't want this data to be automatically published because we still want to analyze, validate, and consolidate this data and decide which data is going to be published and which data is not going to be published. We also have a feature specific uh, to print to uh, Microsoft Office tools where we can build customized reports, for example, interactive dashboards, uh, on one-line diagrams presenting, for example, uh, water quality results. Those reports are automatically connected to our database. So once I import new data into the database, those reports will be automatically updated. 
This one shows some simple statistics about the information on water quality for these specific points and watersheds. This specific graph shows you uh, the violations in the limits of the legislation. So which parameters are above the limit of the legislations more frequently. We can also present radar diagram with different kind of informations as well. And finally, we can also integrate and create interactive dashboards within Power BI, which is a really interesting tool. Uh, just as the office tools, the information will be connected to the database. So once we update, import new data into the database, they will be automatically displayed in the dashboards we create within Power BI. Before I finish the presentation, I'd like to show you some of the reports I have just mentioned to you about inside Hydrogen Analyst. So I'm going back to my project. Here I have all the reports for this specific project. And the first one I'm going to show you is the one line diagram with the water quality results. When we create a new report, we'd like to start with the dashboard consolidating all information. Uh, it's important to notice that all those reports are directly connected to our database from Hydrogen Analyst. And once we import new data into the database, the report will be automatically updated. Here we have our filter criteria. For example, I can choose the years I would like to see my results from. Here I can choose, for example, the water body I want to see the results for. Um, here we have how many points were monitored within those filter criteria, how many parameters were monitored, and how many analyses were made, for example. This graph shows us the conformity legal for each parameter within our legislation limits. And here, finally, we have our one-line diagram with our water quality results. In red, we have the results that are above legislation limits. And in blue, we have the results that are within our le legislation limits. We could choose here the campaign and another parameters we wanted to see this one-line diagram, for example, this one. And once again, this is automatically connected to the database and it will be automatically updated as you import new data into your database. For example, here we have another report which also has a dashboard consolidating all information and we have here a bar chart uh, with some basic statistics information such as mean values, maximum and minimum values and the comparison within the legislation limits. Here uh, I'm showing the graph, ch the chart for pH but I could choose another parameter for example. I could also choose, for example, another mine that I wanted to analyze the information for, for example, this one, and it, it is automatically updated in a dy dynamic form. Just to briefly present you some of the other reports as an example, we have our bar and radar reports for showing you the frequency of results above the legislation limits. Here we have in two different views. I could choose, for example, a different year of analysis, for example, and I have my results automatically shown. We could also show the same information in a bar chart and could also, for example, you have all year selected. Let me show you just 2017, for example. Uh, I'll just quickly show you another example that's not for water quality anymore. This is a report for pumping wells. We also have a dashboard consolidating the volume of 
water extracted and the average efficiency of my pumping wells I could choose one specific mine or I could choose one specific period for example and my information is automatically updated and I have all different sorts of charts here here you have pump rate, average pump rates with my well capacity my efficiency of my wells here I have pile area charts of my pumping rates as well and the same information displayed as a form of table those are just a few examples to show you how flexible this tool is and that we can create any kind of dashboard and report we wanted to create. We could also have created those dashboards in Power BI, for example, as I have mentioned before. And now going back to our presentation, I will show you two quick examples of applications of Hydrogeo Analyst. The first one is about water quality monitoring and visualization of contaminant plumes. We could start with the event planner to plan our sampling campaign and send the EDD template to the laboratory. The laboratory would pre-validate the data with the EDD and create the EDD file to be imported in Hydrogen Analyst. Once we have imported this validated data into our database, we will perform our QAQC analysis of blanks, duplicates, and etc. We would also create our queries to use in our visualization tools, such as maps and borehole logs, for example. In this case, in our maps, we could plot the results from our water quality campaigns and highlighted the results above the legislation limits. Or we could also have done bubble plots with the results from the parameters, for example. We could also create different reports with this information and display it in a 3D plume in visualization and an animated plume. We could also export this information to use in a numerical model. Just keep in mind that Hydrogen Analyst is a software for data management, not numerical modeling, but we could export the data in a formatted way to be used in numerical models and once again this workflow is cyclic once I have a new sampling campaign I will create a new EDD sent to the laboratory and all once I have the information and update the information in our database all this visualization and reporting tools will be automatically updated as well Another application is about water level monitoring. Once again, I could, we could start with the event planning to plan our field task and also send our EDD mobile to the field team. In the field, they could use the EDD mobile to collect and pre-validate the data before importing to Hydrogen Analyst. Or it could be a telemetry system, which would be more automated to import the data into our database. If it is a telemetry system, it is important to notice that we have the, it is important to validate the data before importing into the database or after importing the database. We could create different kinds of report with different validation criteria uh, to validate this information, for example. Once we have the information validated, we can create our queries and display the information into maps once again and visualize the water level surface in 3D as well. We could also display this information online in the online sharing tool, for example, which is static information, or create all different kinds of reports, which are uh, automated and automatically updated once we update the database. We could also display it in Power BI, for example. And once again, this workflow is cyclic. Once I import information into the database, automatically my visualization tools and reporting tools will be updated, with the exception of the online sharing tool. And 
to finalize my presentation, I would just like to show you briefly some steps of environmental and hydrogeological data management. First of all, it is really important to find a tool with a flexible database because you'll be able to fully customize the database structure to accommodate your project needs and scale your project database as your data volumes grow. It is really important to standardize the lists and materials in your database. This will bring you efficiency in data consolidation and the possibility to analyze and correlate this data. We also should suggest you to establish procedures to facilitate and automate data entry, collection, import, validation, and quality control of this data. This will increase your efficiency and achieve cost savings. For this automated data entry, it is important to establish validation routines for pre-import data, as we recommend, or after import to eliminate data inconsistencies and ensure it meets quality requirements for reliable analysis. It's also important, uh, once you have your validated and reliable data into your database, to use integrated analysis, interpretation, and visualization tools to gain greater insight into your environmental data. And Finally, develop dynamic reports for each stakeholders. You have different reports for different purposes, and this will allow you to communicate more efficiency, efficiently. That's all for today. Thank you all for joining us here. If you have any questions, please let me know. Here you have my cell phone and then I, my email as well. Thank you.